Well, it's just that everything is so rotten. When they say I'm the lead researcher for the Transborder Grizzly Bear Project, I'm kind of the only researcher for the Transborder <laughs> Grizzly Bear Project. It makes me sound a little better than I am. Uh, I don't work on grizzly bears because uh, they're fun. I mean, I, I, I do, actually. They are fun. But the bigger reason is that they, uh, they sort of represent the rest of nature. Um, they're what we call maybe an umbrella species or an indicator species. And that means that they have these huge uh, home ranges that range several thousand kilometers and maybe hundreds in any one direction. And their habitat needs overlap almost all other habitat of all the other animals. They're sort of very sensitive to human stuff. And, when we uh, get too uh, dominant in an ecosystem, the grizzly bears aren't there. So I work on them from that, for that larger natural connection. It's really about population fragmentation and movements of bears. What's causing that fragmentation just instantly is just thin strips of humanity, the, the highways and the settlement. Most of the bears get killed uh, in a chicken coop or a, a cherry orchard or a dog food pile. Very few get killed on highways, but some do. So it's a combination of both those things. What I've done for the last eight years is try to figure out ways we can get bears moving safely and not get killed or whatever it might take. And we asked the question, it's real simple, what are the characteristics, the ecological characteristics that say why a bear was caught versus where we didn't catch a bear? It's pretty simple math, really, in the end. And we do this called habitat modeling, ecological modeling, and we can take from 40,000 data points, we can figure out what attracts bears. I wanted to take that habitat model and try to predict the best, what I call, linkage areas across all those highways and those yellow lines. Those are the places that the bears have taught me where it's best to cross humanity and to erase those yellow lines. So I want to go into those places, what I call linkage areas, right? And I can't, I can't retrain all of humanity in that, in that, on that map, but I can retrain a little bit of humanity. And what I'm trying to do is retrain a little bit of humanity within those green blobs. Those are called linkage areas. And we're going to get, you know, we're going to get humans to behave or live a little better so the bears that try to move between these populations don't get killed. It's very simple. I specialize in very simple science. See this pink? These are the movement patterns of a female grizzly bear. She was kind of young. She's about four. She's a teenage female, maybe about 16 or 18 in human terms. And she lived down in the valley. And she hung around in the wildlife management area. That's up and down here. And then one day, she decided to go across to the other side of Creston. So she was very, this is after we had depicted the linkage zone. So she, just, she went up to the linkage zone, across the valley, and went around and explored all this, all in a few days, and decided, no. I don't like it over here, and she shouldn't. It's not very good bear habitat. So instead of just coming back home, like about 10 feet, she's a very smart bear, she went back north to the linkage zone and came in there. And the point of that story is there's something about that linkage zone that the bear knows he's going to stay alive, right? Bear realizes, if I go out in here, I'm going to be dead, and that's typically what happens. And we see this over and over. There is really something to these linkage zones. Uh, the, and that's why I say the bears taught us, but they, they go to these places, so they, they do kind of mean something.